of, of an excellent application for tire drive aggregate is using it as the aggregate in the, the, uh, in the uh, distribution field for on-site uh, waste treatment systems, which most people would call septic tanks. Uh, and there you're using uh, probably a thousand or so uh, tires per project. We can spread them out in a 12 inch thick layer and what you need is something that's permeable. The, uh, the way the waste actually gets treated is over time uh, uh, bacteria and algae and such grow on the outside of the tire pieces and actually what, what contributes to the uh, treatment of the uh, wastewater. Over 10 years ago now, the state of New York was starting to be concerned about uh, the tire piles, uh, scrap tires that had uh, been left around the state, and also the current generation, yearly generation of tires. And um, we had heard of um, some other states allowing TDA, tire drive aggregate, to be used in septic systems. And since we're, our center is based in the Department of Civil, Structural, and Environmental Engineering, it made a lot of sense for us to start looking into TDA as a replacement for stone aggregate in uh, septic system leach field applications. We did pilot testing of the TDA. Uh, we looked for specifically for chemical leaching characteristics of the TDA. We then uh, designed and installed a full-scale demonstration project. Tell me what the advantage of using uh, TDA in a septic system uh, would be. There's a couple of things. Um, one of the, the, the best features is that there's 62% void space in tire chips compared to 44% in gravel. So the, the whole purpose of a drain field is to hold the water until the, the, the ground will accept the water. So there's about 30% more holding capacity using tire chips in a, in a drain field like this having the, the water the, in, in the drain field being able to be accepted into the ground uh, is a big issue because if not then you're going to have a problem with your septic system. Also the tire chips um, are lightweight. Uh, a cubic yard of gravel is about 2,800 pounds and the tire chips are 800 pounds per cubic yard. So it's an issue with compaction which is a big problem with septic systems so that helps also. And another thing um, we're, we're in South Jersey right now. It's very sandy soil. There's no stone. It all has to be imported from other states. So one of the big reasons that people like it, it's not as expensive. Do you think it's a good partnership now between uh, government officials and contractors with the application of tire chips? Yes. Uh, it was hard at first. It took, uh, it took us a few years to get the regulators to approve it. Naturally, they were skeptical, you know, something new. Then we had a whole new issue is to get it into the marketplace and we faced the same skepticism with the installers. And once we got over that, um, they keep using it. I mean, they call us all the time. We're delivering material every day. This is a typical installation um, for a septic system. It's not a mound system. It's just a gravity system. Um, you can see the tire chips are Really, all they are are an aggregate replacement, a stone replacement, a gravel replacement. There's nothing fancy, nothing has to be done any differently. Uh, they have to level the pipes for the, the drain field. They have the tire chips underneath, and then they cover up the pipes with the, uh, with the tire chips. So it's really a simple, basic installation, just like any other drain field would be. Done septic systems and you've been very pleased with tire drive aggregate and yeah. now you're branching out? Yes we are. We're continuing to look for value added uses for tire derived aggregate. Uses that not just replace stone aggregate but uses that actually bring more value to it and a perfect example is uh, the idea of using TDA as lightweight backfill against uh, building foundations. At, at our company, we actually became part of this, uh, the, agri the uh, derived tire aggregate board here with the U University of Buffalo. There were a lot of hoops to jump through to get it to be used off-site in this application with the different state agencies and the, the building departments for the town I'm building, but it, it was something that I wanted to pursue and it, it all came together and the timing worked out well. What do you hope to get out of using this for your house? Well, we're, we're 
really it's it's just personal i mean just the use of tire chips and uh, the reuse and the beneficial use of a material um the uh, the actual walls that we've used them have been you know instrumented and they're going to be gathering a lot of information so we'll be able to assess the difference uh, between like the tire chips and in, in, in the natural aggregate that's uh, used as backfill in other portions of the home. Uh, you know, the, one of the concerns was the settlement along the house, but uh, it's been in. We, we compacted it when we when we placed it, and it seems like there's virtually no settlement or less settlement than even the natural fill that was placed around there. And the house is pretty well uh, done now that you know the the structure is, is done as as we speak. And, West side of the Hassock House, looking north. The trench is filled as far as it's going to be with TDA. And the next step is to fold over the geotextile fabric. What's visible towards the back are two uh, rods that are uh, being used to measure settlement. What's also visible is wiring leading down to pressure plates and temperature sensors. We're at the south side of the Hassock residence where we're backfilling with conventional backfill to act as a control section for comparison with the TDA section that was backfilled. We can see the instruments here, which are similar, although not identical, to what was placed in the TDA. We have contact pressure cells that are set to measure lateral earth pressures against the basement wall. We also have one other contact pressure cell at the base of the backfill to measure vertical earth pressures, and we have resistance thermometers or thermistors dispersed throughout the backfill to give us distribution of temperature at any given time. And finally, we're placing these settlement plates. The long one here is a reference plate. We'll put another one in at the three foot mark, another one in the top to get relative displacements of the backfill, also for comparison to what we're monitoring. If you have a choice between gravel and tire-derived aggregate, what would set tire-derived aggregate apart? Well, many times uh, it's lightweight it is desirable, uh, and it has better insulating properties than standard soil type uh, aggregates have. Oh, definitely it'll help keep moisture away from your basement because it drains rather readily and, and moisture will not get trapped uh, within the tire-derived aggregate like it might uh, with a, a soil material that has a, a lot of clay or finer material in it. The Department of Environmental Conservation is the state's primary uh, environmental regulatory agency. They approve of what we're doing, they do everything they can to support us, uh, they have made, they need to change some regulations, make some approvals. One of the challenges we have is to make sure the tide drag aggregate is as available to the construction company as as regular aggregate. Do you think that homeowners would actually embrace using tire derived aggregate for their homes? I think if they understood the the benefits and if it becomes more of a common practice so that they they see that it's been done before with no problems that they will. I think the 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 audience that you need to attract and convince first are the developers and the builders and then they'll sell it uh, the idea at least to the to the homeowners. The most cost-effective use for tire drive aggregate, though, is using it as a vibration damping layer beneath rail lines. Let me describe what the problem is. The train goes down the tracks. The vibrations go out through the ground to the homes and businesses that are adjacent to the tracks, and it re-emerges as noise in the homes. Now, it's only a problem if you live in one of those homes, and especially if it's a commuter rail line where you've got a train going by every 15 minutes during, during you know, the morning and the afternoon, it's incredibly annoying. So what we've done is we've taken and used a 12-inch thick layer of tire-derived aggregate underneath the stone ballast. And what that does is it absorbs the vibration from the train so that it doesn't then go out through the ground and, and, uh, and impact the homes and businesses right next to the tracks. Uh, we've done that on a half a mile of track in San Jose, California. It's a very basic application. Is, uh, b before they start building the tracks, they excavate down uh, about two feet. They place in a foot of TDA, which is then wrapped in a synthetic blanket. Um, they put the ballast rock and the sub the sub ballast and the ballast rock on it, and they they you know they the trains run as normal. By having having the tires there, uh, we've been able to demonstrate through extensive acoustical studies that the amount of 
vibration that is exerted on nearby structures is, is significantly reduced. Um, the material that we used in those projects is what we refer to as a type A. It's about a two to three inch size um, tire, tire um, chip. A type A typically works more like rock, such as this material here. It goes into trenches easier. As we as a country look at using or making better use of mass transit, uh, to take and, and relieve some of the congestions on our roads as well as be a more environmentally friendly way to get uh, to and from work, uh, it's going to be these new lines. As we really build out our mass transit systems, we're going to see more uses of tire drive aggregate as vibration damping layers beneath rail lines. Proponents of TDA say its use as a substitute for natural aggregate and other manufactured lightweight fills not only is beneficial in civil engineering projects, but in the process garners other positive side effects as well. In addition to recycling used tires, the use of TDA will reduce the amount of mining needed to produce more traditional forms of aggregate, as well as passing on project cost savings. Many believe it is vital that we continue to explore new and innovative markets for scrap tires in the U.S. and throughout North America in the world to prevent the existence of stockpiles and the threat they pose to human health and the environment. What do you see for the future for a tire drive aggregate? I think the future looks bright. Uh, we've got as many cars as ever on the road and a lot of material to use up. We've got uh, a lot of bad roads out there that need to be fixed. We had over a hundred old stockpiles in New York State uh, five years ago. Those stockpiles are dwindling now where uh, the ten, eight out of the top ten stockpiles have now been cleaned up. By 2011, I would expect that they're all going to be cleaned up and much of that material will have gone into tire drive aggregate applications. Take the seven million plus tires that are currently going to California landfills and find a, a useful home for them. I think as the engineering community and the contractors become more familiar with it, I think it's just going to continue to grow. You've got to have alternate markets. Uh, so one of the things that I preach is, is really that we've got to have multiple strong markets uh, to be able to make uh, effective use of our scrap tires and civil engineering applications of scrap tires. It's important to have that as, as part of the mix. So there are a number of different applications in the building construction uh, uh, industry that we feel uh, will catch on in New York State. Our, the goal of our TDA program really is to keep a diversified market for scrap tires uh, to keep recycling as active as possible. We're still hunting new ways to uh, integrate this uh, and it could be other things besides tires for that matter but right now it's waste tires and finding ways to integrate them into civil uh, engineering applications and there's still a lot of room left and a lot of places left that we keep we keep looking at new avenues going oh that would be probably give a benefit there and if it's cost effective and it's a better solution than the traditional means um, that's great.